Robbie on the button with the 8-6 offsuit. Jesse has a king five of spades in the small blind here. I would expect Jesse is going to flat with how he's been playing. Really? You've been out of the small blind? I would expect that because I think he's just trying to take pots against Robbie, especially with a hand that can flop strong flushes. I disagree with you here. Taylor calls, so Jack Seven suited. Wow, and what a flop for Taylor, who hits two pair. Robbie has the gut shot. Yep. Typically, he's been betting these spots. makes a large bet of 175 and now the question is if you're Taylor you're facing 175,000 chip bet you have 1.3 million uh, I just I just check raise and let's go don't you I would yeah let's go with the way that Robbie has been playing I, I'm I'm happy bumping it up to about yeah 450 here and planning on going with it Looks like that's what Taylor's thinking as well. <laughs> the people commenting and watching on, on Twitch are saying that Taylor looks a little bit like Johnny Cage for Mortal Kombat. Interesting, with the sunglasses <laughs> and everything. <laughs> Robbie does make the call, and he turns a pair of sixes. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm just not a big fan of that call. Neither am I. Uh, Taylor has a little over 800,000 left. There's 1.1 million in the pot. He is going to shove here on the turn. Shouldn't take Ravi too long here. Unless he's on a bigger tilt than we realize, but I, I don't think he's—I uh, don't think he's losing his mind or anything. What is going on here? <laughs> what the? <laughs> they. <j> oh, <laughs> Rob. So Robbie said he would call for an additional five dollars. So Taylor whips out his wallet and puts five dollars into a pot. This is interesting. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Robbie. 
I mean, Tony, they're only playing for a quarter million dollars. You know That's that all. that extra five dollars in there may may incentivize uh, Ravi to to make the call. Funny little exchange there. That's that's always fun. I think Ravi is looking for excuses not to fold his hands as much as as much as he possibly can. This would be a super ambitious call. The flop call was ambitious. This would be I mean, you're basically saying you have king queen. Yeah. That's what he's doing. Or queen nine. Or queen nine. You're right. Which we we can't be 100 percent sure that Taylor plays those hands this way, especially given Robbie's tendencies. But to be fair, against against Taylor's specific hand, Robbie does have 14 percent equity. When he's up against eight nine, for example, or a set, he's he has much worse equity. Robbie does need about 30%, 29.5% equity to make the call here, given his pot odds. He just told Taylor that he puts him on a bluff. Seems like it, see, it, it seems like Robbie is putting gut shot combos in, in Taylor's range here. Uh, what? Queen 8? You've got one of the 8s. Why would he blast off with a gut shot here? Robbie asking if there's a, a break immediately following this hand. Maybe that will influence his action. Now, do you think it's possible the way that Taylor reacted to the $5 question has... I thought it looked confident. He's like, yeah, all right, I'll put however much money you want on this. Right. Robbie just seems like he's kind of mentally unwound a little bit here. Because this, you know, Kane, this just isn't a hard hand. It isn't. And the 6-4 and the hand, you know, was not a hard situation. Your but remember, Ravi is here, he is here to win, so it's possible that... It isn't any type of tilt that it, this is was just his plan coming into the final table is not to, you know, listen, if I have a pair and a gut shot, uh, folding is not on the top of my priority list. And I'll tell you what, after making a two million chip call with pocket queens and being right, mm -hmm. as as a, an amateur, you may be more likely to make a call. And I think he, he called. He just made the call. And we're going to go to the river with Robbie having 14% equity. He yeah. needs a 6 or a six 9. Or nine. Well, it would certainly be a miraculous way to, to knock out Taylor. No, it's a 3. So Taylor three. is going to double up here. Taylor doubles up, but more importantly, he keeps his $5. Yeah. Gets that much closer to becoming our third back-to-back -back champion on the season. How are you feeling and about that twenty dollars right now, Kane? Oh man, I'll Oof. tell you. I'll tell you what. With that, we now have a new chip leader at the table, and that is Jesse Rockowitz. Yeah. Taylor now with two point eight million chips, about seventy big blinds. 
What do you think? You think he looks like Johnny Cage? A little bit. Yeah, I can, I can see it. Here we go, uh, Kane. Tim Riley says, uh, how is Ravi Shove versus Tapor on Nine of Clubs River when Tay checked behind the turn in any way good? I thought it was as bad as his ace five hand. Can you remind me of that this? That was the hand here? where Taylor uh, flopped jack eight of spades on 10 nine, I think five with two spades. And uh, Ravi had the ace nine of spades. And the turn went check, check. And the river, he found another nine. He ripped for like two X pot. Right. So the question is, why is that better than betting a, a different size? Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I would have preferred for Robbie as played to have checked the river. I thought that was ideal because there's a bunch of missed draws. And also, like, if your opponent has a 10, especially a good 10, I think he's going to bet the turn some of the time. Right. Um, I mean, if your opponent has a 9, you're going to get all of his chips anyway. Uh, See, that's what I'm not sure about. I, th I actually do think maybe, that maybe Taylor not. would just flat a lot of 9s yeah. rather than raise. So that is why I, I actually don't mind the all-in. I, don't, I, don't th I think it's very opponent-dependent. The reason I don't mind it is if I'm Taylor, I'm going to be very hesitant against Ravi to want to fold a 10. So, And there are quite a few 10s that I'm going to check back on the turn. Um, I certainly would never, ever fold a 9 to an all-in, yep. whereas I might just call a normal bet with a 9. So I could see the merit to, to going all-in there with, with ace-9. I would have preferred a check, simply because I think there's a decent amount of air uh, with which Taylor makes it to the river. Jesse will take that one down with his ace high. Right, guys, you got another five minutes to complete your lineups and your teams on DraftKings for tonight's 11-game NBA slate. Is there going to be overlay tonight? Uh, nope. The $30 one looks like it filled up. And the $300 one is one entry from filling up. Uh, still some slots left in the $3 one, but man, those DraftKings tournaments are filling quick. Now remember, they got the $20 buy-in that is a 150 k guaranteed tomorrow for the March Madness. So I'm going to be doing my homework on college basketball tonight when we're done here, Kane. And uh, I haven't done any brackets yet, but uh, I will be most certainly doing some DraftKings. So hard not to just take Kentucky, of course. I'm lucky that uh, my guys from Wisconsin have got a really good team this year and could make a run. They're going to run into Arizona at some point in their bracket, uh, which I believe they did last year as well, if I'm remembering correct. Should be a great tournament. Hopefully somebody can upset Kentucky, just because it's more interesting that way. <laughs> Although I guess the uh, the perfect season is an interesting story too. Of course. But uh, yeah, you know, you want to see the big upset. Do you still go to basketball games, football games at Wisconsin? Uh, well, I'm not there very often, but mm. I certainly would. I'll tell you this, the environment for a Wisconsin football game is amazing. It is so much fun. There's great tailgating before and after the game. Everyone pours out into the bars after... Uh, you know, the students get so up for it during the game. They play jump around at the end of the third quarter, and everyone goes crazy. Uh, and it's a good program, you know. They've, they've yeah. been a solid team for a while now. So I can imagine. That yeah. is just a, a football city. Very much. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's just a city that revolves around the university. So whatever, whatever big game is on then, the city really turns out for it, and they really support those teams. Yeah, I, mi I miss the U-Miami football games. Oh, those would be awesome, That was too. always a lot of fun. Oh, man. Uh, somehow I suspect the girls are better looking in Miami than Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> check call here from Jesse. And he turns a queen with his ace queen.
Certainly a nice turn to see when you when mm -hmm. you call the flop there. I want to say he just called pre-flop, right? He did not three bet. Correct. Yeah, which is a little surprising. I normally would just three bet that hand for value. I would have as well. Yeah. Both players will check that turn. Eight of diamonds on the river. Now we're going to see Jesse bet, and then Taylor has a decision to make. I'm inclined to say he will fold. I think that Jesse can bet his tens. Um, he would probably not bet an eight nine. Uh, he can bet he can have queens and he can bet queens. Obviously, you can have missed hearts. I don't I, know. I would be surprised if it went anything other than bet fold. Yeah. Even Jack Nine got there. He does bet pretty small. About 35% the size of the pot. You know, when I think about it, I really blew it when I set the over-under for our little bet. Like, I was thinking, like, oh, man, this is a deep deck final table. But it really is, like, the longest final table to last, like, eight, nine hours. And I just kind of perceived this as a longer one. But I don't, you know, there wasn't a lot of uh, reason to believe that. This probably averaged more like six, seven hours. I think I uh, made a dumb bet there. That's why I don't make those kind of bets. <laughs> Stick to my DraftKings, thank you. And so like I said, I, I don't think this is like a snap folder or anything, but I do believe Taylor will fold. Yep, I'm wrong. I've been wrong a lot today. I'm a little surprised by that call yeah. as well. So so many of Jesse's bluff combos got there on the river. 5-6 uh, got there. Jack-9 yeah. got there. Um, so not quite sure why he made that call. Of course, he was getting a, a very good price mm. on the call. Yeah, not like a, a super unreasonable call, but just not one I expected him to make. The other interesting thing about about our bet mm -hmm. is the way that Ravi is playing really increases the the variance and I yeah. think speeds up the match in a lot of ways. You know, just having players go all in, even even with Ravi only having a fourteen percent chance to win the hand. You know, mm -hmm. there's a fourteen percent chance that we were going to be heads up after that pot. Yeah, that's right. And then we got half hour levels. There's just no way it lasts another four hours. Right, bad, if, bad especially if Ravi is one of the players heads up. I, I I can guarantee you that if Ravi is one of the players heads up, that heads up match will be faster than it, if it is Jesse and Taylor playing Most a heads Most definitely. Up match. Ravi's out there swinging. Well, Jesse will fold his small blind there. I would fold the small blind there as well. As we had discussed previously, the antes are now less of a factor given that there are three players left. When you're at a table full of uh, with nine players, it, it increases your preflop pot odds by having more dead money, dead antes in the pot when it when it folds around to you, or when you're considering defending the big blind, for example, or when you're considering completing the small blind. But when there are only three players left, you need to tighten your ranges in for defense. Jesse with the ace eight offsuit on the button. He will be opening here. Tony, if you were Jesse, would you be raising more than two X because Robbie is defending so many big blinds? I'd be tempted to, especially if I had narrowed my raising range a little bit to include more quality hands. I think I would as well. Now, the, I'm sure what's part of what Jesse is thinking is I 
have a post-flop advantage on my opponent, and I want to be as deep stacked as possible mm -hmm. after the flop. So I, I definitely see arguments on both sides. I tend to react to who's in the big blind and raise bigger the more frequently that person defends. So here we have essentially a, a, a very small three bet from Robbie with Jack 10 of spades. Jesse had made it 80,000, Robbie made it 175,000, which is a very strange sizing. And now he flops top pair and checks. Jesse betting a little more than half pot here. And Ravi, of course, will be continuing with his top pair. Seems like he's <coughs> Hollywooding a little bit here before before making the call, or perhaps he is considering a raise, and it looks like he's reaching for raising chips. Wow. That's, uh, they are very deep stacked for yeah, Ravi to be making this raise, but I'll tell you what, to the extent that Ravi has been raising with so many bluffs or semi-bluffs, he might think there's some there's some value here in raising for me on on this board as played my own my only play would be to call um and and jesse quickly lays down the, the ace eight and, and robbie's gonna win the putt And that puts Robbie back in the chip lead. What an amazing story. Cashing in his first tournament at Bay 101 and now here at the final table, Thunder Valley, here in Lincoln, California. Back-to-back -back WPT final tables for two of the remaining three players at yeah. this table for both Taylor Parr and for Robbie. When you're hot, you're hot. Do you believe in that? Do you believe in, in live tournament poker momentum? It certainly seems to be a true thing. Uh, no, not really, but I, I do believe in confidence, which is like you have a big result, and then you play more confident the next time out, and for whatever reason, you know, it, it's such an intangible thing, such a hard thing to describe why would confidence matter. Um... But you see that, though, repeatedly, it seems like. It seems like when people have results, well, they have results very consistently over a couple months and then they kind of fall off the radar and are having less results for a year. I mean, year. just remember there's a huge pool of people who can potentially fall into the, the series of results, right. right? Like, you know, if in the last month or so, I don't know, 50 to 100 people have made a major live final table that you and I have heard about and then, you know, uh, a couple dozen of them show up and play this event. Like, what are the odds that one of them final tables? And then we're like, oh, man, this guy's on such a cicada. How does this stuff happen all the time? Well, like, right. It's, it's kind of like that bet uh, that Amarillo Slim used to make with everyone about the birthdays. You know, um, you're, you've got these compounding percentages where you know, he would go and say in a big room of people, ah, you know, I'll, I'll bet you if we ask 30 people, uh, two of these people share a birthday and a lot of people are like oh 30 people though there's 365 days in a year and you got only 30 chances like that's nothing but at the point you've asked 28 people then you have all those birthdays accumulated so you ask the 29th guy it's no longer one in 365 it's 28 in 365 and all of those compound on each other and it's right. the same thing with people going on streaks in poker you've got this huge pool of people who could potentially go on a streak and you only need one or two of them to do it before we're like holy crap what's going on here right I haven't heard about the birthday hustle before, but that's a pretty good one. Oh yeah, did you ever read Emerald Slim's book? No. What's There's, the name of it? Uh, this one was it was it was really old school, and of course a lot of people came out and said, yeah, you know, if any of that stuff was true, blah 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 blah. Um, but there were some really clever hustles in there. Uh, yeah. The birthday one was fun. 
I remember he, he bet people that he could... Uh, by the way, Jesse's got the stone nuts here, <laughs> so hopefully Rami doesn't try and bluff this board. <laughs> um, he would bet, and spoke too soon, he would bet people that he could hit a, a golf ball a mile mm -hmm. off a normal tee, and they would say, yeah, well, let's, you know, let's see it. Not downhill or anything? No, not downhill. And so he'd take him out to a frozen lake and just rip it, <laughs> just slide along. Um, there was a cool bet where he had heard that there was some kind of like uh, drug dealer or drug pin kingpin who got arrested and, and, and had money uh, confiscated with him. And he had heard that this guy was sitting away in jail and, and rotting in there. And he said to the jailer, uh, I want you to throw me in jail with this guy, you know, just overnight or whatever it is. So he goes in and he just kind of talks and, and shoots the shit with this guy and they're hanging out. And there's this fly buzzing around uh, the jail cell. And he says something like, you know, I bet if we placed three sugar cubes out, I would know 100% which one the fly lands on. And the guy's like, you give me 50-50 on that? He said, yeah, yeah, I'll give you 50-50. I'll bet you as much as you want. I know flies. You know, I can, I've can. i got this, this sixth sense for flies or whatever it is. Drug dealer's like, all right. So Slim sets out the three sugar cubes, and uh, the fly just goes straight for the one he picks. Well, because Slim licked his finger. And on w set it on the, uh, oh, uh, that's not going to help you, Ravi, but I, I hope you don't think that it does. <laughs> um, he licked his finger and, and then touched one of the cubes, which apparently creates an aroma. It dissolves a little bit and creates an aroma, and the fly goes straight for it. Ah, interesting. Yeah. There's a bunch of little hustles in there. It's, uh, uh, he bet a ping pong champion once, that the, like a real you know champ. Yeah, I could take you and ping pong this and that. I get to choose the paddles. Guy said, okay, I don't, I'm not concerned about paddles. What does Slim do? He goes over to the Coke machine, buys a couple of bottles, pours out the Coke, says, here's your paddle. And he had been practicing with a Coke bottle for a month or two prior to this. And wow. all of a sudden, the champion's got to try and play with this Coke bottle. It's too awkward. But apparently, the guy still came fairly close to beating him. I, well, I, I, would, I might still take the ping pong champion in yeah. that situation. Yeah, that's interesting. That was a good book for me to read at, like, 18 or 19 because it made me remember, like, hey, if anybody in the poker world offers you a bet, just say no. Like, these guys these guys will, will think for, for months or weeks ahead of time about how to get you. And here you are making bets with me about how long this final table is yeah. going to last. And it yeah, looks that like was you really might be dumb. a dog right now. <laughs> it's like when Antonio says, like, hey, let's play a lot in things. Just say no. <laughs> He's out to get you. Uh, let's see. I guess I can be glad that you didn't bring sugar cubes and a fly. No. No, I'm not big on hustling. So Ravi does check here. And uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, Jesse reached for chips to bed and, and maybe Ravi, he Ravi or something. Yeah, quickly yeah, that's folded. that's kind of what I thought must have happened. That hand took, took a little too long for... Considering what was, what was happening there, so... That, that moves Ravi down to second place now in the chip lead going back and forth between Jesse Rockowitz and Ravi Sunder. Action with Ravi here, got an 8-6. So he'll take that one down, uncontested. Of course, there was the great Ivy Golf hustle, um, that created a big problem with, uh, what was it, Ram Vaswani or something like that, where this is a story from a good five, ten years ago where apparently Ivy had, uh, you know, played a lot of golf with these guys before, and they had a sense of what his handicap was, and then uh, I guess they talked about making another bet, and, and Ivy said, yeah, you know, I've been practicing a little bit, uh, I want a slightly improved handicap or a bet or line or whatever it was, so they gave it to him, and then they got on the course, and it became readily apparent that Ivy had been practicing all the time, and Ram just walked off the course and refused to pay, and had to go to arbitration, it was a whole mess. Wow, what yeah. ended up happening? I want to say it was a three-panel arbitration. I don't remember if the if there was a settlement, if Ram just 
refused to pay or what had, what had happened with that one. But, hmm. you know, basically in the poker world, if, if somebody you don't know that well wants to bet you a lot of money on an uncertain outcome that they have any control in, just pass. For sure. Just pass, you know. Especially any of the old school guys. <laughs> that, I mean, like, the old school guys, you know, poker for a long time, uh, poker players were, you know, they were gamblers first and poker players like sixth. You know, they might be like a gambler first, and then they were a card counter, and then they were like a pool hustler, and then they were like a golf hustler, and then somewhere at like number five, and then they're six in the list. They're like, yeah, I play poker too. And then poker blew up, so a lot of them took poker more seriously, but something that we kind of forgot in the history of the game is a lot of these guys came from a hustling background. Right. Yeah. Certainly. Some that stand out is uh, Sammy Farha used to be a oh, ping pong man. hustler. Yeah. Right? That's it. He used to make his living playing people in ping pong. I mean, I didn't, I didn't even know you could find people to to play in ping pong for serious amounts of money. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different games that guys are really, really good at. Ravi here. Turns a king. Of course, Gus Hansen has made some money at backgammon. Backgammon, that's right. Patrick Antonius has, has made some money playing tennis. Yes. Phil Gordon, rock, paper, scissors. Have you ever seen uh, Antonius on the courts? I haven't. He's really good. I played next to Gus Hansen and Antonius uh, once in Australia, and it was you just kind of look over and just felt dumb. Just out there, you know, I'm like an okay tennis player, and we're all, you know, out there screwing around, kind of getting some of our serves in, and, you know, having these sort of like intermediate length points, and meanwhile... You know, Gus and Patrick, just every shot looks like Federer and Nadal. You know, <laughs> it's just so smooth, and all their serves go in, and they're chasing down all these balls. They were both really good. I actually went and played some, some badminton yesterday. Mm -hmm. You would have enjoyed that. I would have liked that. I like badminton. Man, I haven't, badminton. I haven't played badminton since high school. It's so much fun. Yeah. It is, it's a nice, and it's such a great cardio workout. You know, you got to move your feet really quickly, and by the end, you're, you know, I played seven games. By the end, I was dead. I was ready to pass out, but it was so much fun. You and Aaron Mermelstein really did have a date yesterday. We did. It yeah. was, it, you know, a little wiffle ball, a little badminton, mm -hmm. finishing it off at the at the steakhouse with you. It was a fun yep. day. Yeah. And here we have an interesting situation where Taylor raises to 80,000, and we got Ravi in the small blind with ace-king, and he is electing what? to he just, just doesn't call the, the ace-king. What in the... I mean, Jesse's got a sweet hand that goes Jesse, to Jesse, of course, with is going to call, and I, I do not like this flat by Ravi out of the no, small blind. No, of course blind. not. Come on, Ravi. I was showing you so much love before. Well, it's going to be tough for him yeah. to lose the hand. A jack, of course, will be problematic. That is small bet from Taylor. Yeah, really small bet. Yeah. About one fourth the size of the pot. I don't. I don't really like betting that small, just because. I feel like I would want to bet bigger for my hands for value. Just Jesse quickly folds. That's that's a hand I would I would consider raising in that spot. Jack nine of clubs. In fact, I probably would. I think that is one of the best hands you can bluff with in this spot. Um, because you have backdoor flush draws and backdoor straight draws. The other hands that you could bluff with would be low pairs to make full houses. Um, but especially considering the bet was so small mm -hmm. and and Ravi just called, I. I I probably would have definitely been having some some thoughts of bluffing in that spot. But. So it goes check, check on the turn, and now Robbie bets a little bit more than half pot. I don't think we'll be seeing any more chips go in this pot. It seemed like Taylor wanted to bet small just kind of to test the waters on the flop and see if he could take it down right there and not invest too, too many chips in this pot.
Robbie shows the ace king after trying to talk Taylor into a call unsuccessfully. Yeah, and you, you know, you know, I don't really like the show there. No, neither do I. Certainly is is giving away some information to be flatting ace king at the small blind. But if you can remember that that information of, of the pocket deuces call could have been the impetus for Ravi to have accumulated all of his chips with pocket queens in the hand against Harrison. Yeah. So perhaps Ravi is, is cognizant of you know what what he is showing and he, trying to use that to his advantage. Here he has the eight six offsuit on the button. And my guess is he's going to raise to ninety five thousand. Right on the money. Taylor out. And Robbie will take it. Jesse opening the button here with Jack seven. Taylor in the small blind with king eight suited. We've seen him three bet king eight suited already out of the small blind. That hand was against Robbie when it was four handed. And he does go ahead and three bet his king eight suited. That's a nice hand at three bet there. I like some medium suited kings out of the small blind. Who is your character in Mortal Kombat? Speaking of Johnny Cage. Hmm. I mixed it up. I mixed it up on uh, on Mortal Kombat. Sub Zero was always sweet because then you could just freeze the guys and kick them in the face. Yeah. Uh, always a good option. Um, I was more experienced at Street Fighter than in anything else. That was kind of my go-to. More of a Street Fighter guy. More huh? of a Street Fighter. They were both. Uh, they were both sweet games. Who was the go-to character in Street Fighter? Uh, I was really good with Guile. Okay. Throw that Sonic Boom. Yeah. Um, Ken and Ryu. You know their moves are so similar. Mm-hmm. And then the later, the later ones, Vega. Vega was sweet. He was really fast. Ooh, Ravi here with a pair of jacks. Come on, Ravi, show us some three bets. I was more, I was more of a Street Fighter. New oh wow, this is interesting. With Ace King here in the big blind for Jesse, he certainly will be three betting. Yeah, you gotta. I was never very good at Street Fighter, so I used Dalheem and just. Took advantage of his long, his long reach. Ah, uh, yeah. 
that's very similar to in, in Tekken, just kind of choosing Eddie, I feel like, and <laughs> dancing all over the place yeah. and hoping things work out. You're right, there's going to be a three bet here. Looks like 235. Now, is Ravi going to just flat, or is he going to come back over the top here with the pocket jacks? We've seen I him. Mean, we've seen him flat aces and then min four bet very early on at this final table. I hope he doesn't do that, because I would have liked an initial 3-bet, but I don't like 4-betting here. And he does just call. Yeah. Oh, good flop for his jacks. I imagine Jesse will be c-betting this board. Check. Checks back. Wow, Jesse actually does check. I. I think that's a, an opponent-specific check, and yeah. I don't mind it against Robbie. I hope Robbie bets here now. And he is reaching. You would assume that if Jesse checked back the flop, he's going to peel once on the turn, especially on a brick? Certainly. Okay. We're on the same page. Fairly large bet here from Ravi, 375. I, I still just, I don't really see Jesse folding, despite the sizing. Yeah, I, I wouldn't fold. Something we don't really know about Robbie is how thin he's capable of value betting. I think that that plays into whether or not you should call here. If he's three betting a four, for example, or all pairs fives through eights, um, then perhaps you can make an argument for laying this down. I'm not sure we've seen enough hands from Robbie, and from what I have seen from Robbie, I would expect him to check those kind of hands. So Jesse does make the call. Jesse will call the 375. Five of clubs on the river. Will Robbie check or bet? He checks. Both players check, and Ravi's going to win this one. Not a big fan of that check on the yeah. river from Ravi. You just have the best hand pretty much every time. You know, if your opponent had big clubs, he's going to follow through on the flop. And I don't think he's, you know, slow playing uh, a bigger pair than yours. I, I don't think he's being called by Ace King uh, on that particular river, but man, you, you never know. I mean, it's a semi brick. Yeah, just Jesse would not have called with Ace calls, King on that river, but there are hands in Jesse's range that he. That he does call with. Yeah. If he had three bet the eight nine of hearts, for example, he's he's going to get to the river, and that then he's going to con certainly contemplate a call. We have the WPT Royal Flush Girls. Mm -hmm. That is Brittany. Brittany. And Miss Chuba. Guam. Yeah, you're right about that. So congratulations to her on that. Here's Robbie on his button with. Jack six offsuit. You ever been to Guam? Only the airport. Jesse here with a pair of deuces in this ball. I do know from watching John Oliver's show that there are American citizens who can't vote. That doesn't seem quite right. Hmm. Yep. 
they get a delegate in Congress, but he doesn't get to do anything either. He just gets to like show up and listen to everyone bicker. Interesting. That does not seem right. Nope. Have we seen Robbie fold a button? It's not his go-to. I think the weakest hand we've seen him open was maybe Queen Deuce or Queen Three. Taylor. Wow. Th squeezing. This uh, just every hand is three bet now. Yeah. And I'm not sure why he's he's choosing electing to three bet the Queen Seven offsuit here. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I agree. Perhaps he he believes that whenever Jesse flats out of the small blind, it is an opportunity, as Jesse would likely three bet a weak opponent hands. with with his strong hands. Man, Ravi just hates folding. <laughs> you got him this time. It should work. Jesse's not really getting the odds he needs to set mine here, so it should work. But um, then I definitely get the logic behind it. But it just seems tough when when Ravi is going to flat you so much. I mean, Jesse. Do you think there's any chance that Jesse could go all in here? I'd be surprised. That seems like a lot. There we go. Maybe Taylor had some type of tell uh, on the way that, that Ravi raised the button in that hand, and that that was the, the impetus. Well, we and we have seen Taylor be willing to three bet some subpar hands out of the big blind. Sure. Um, I don't want to act like I hate that player or anything like that. It's I normally wait for a slightly better hand, but maybe if you just think, as you said, that Jesse is only going to flat weaker hands because all of his better hands is three bet Robbie for value, then mm -hmm. you can get away with it a whole bunch. Jesse folds Taylor now with ace deuce suited in the small blind. He steals Robbie's raise size to ninety-five thousand, and Robbie with Jack eight of spades, lower spades here, and I imagine he will be calling out of the big blind. Yep. Yeah, better flop for Ravi than Taylor there. He gets a gut shot with his jack eight. Would you be C-betting here if you're Taylor? <laughs> well, uh, no, probably not. Yeah, um, I, would, I would check as well. Easy if there, if there were a spade on the board, I, I would be more inclined to see yeah. that. And Robbie's bet sizing has been very big compared to the other players at this table. Here he bets 180 into 205. And I can't imagine that Taylor is going to continue, but I guess I'm proven wrong. Taylor puts in the 180,000. What do you think about this check call by Taylor here? I don't mind it. Really? Yeah, I just think your hand's best a lot. I don't know that... I mean, Robbie's, you know... He's taken some hits recently. I don't know if he's going to blast off at me that much. I'm not sure if I'm ready to fold ace high. Obviously, I feel better about it when we have a spade, but uh, I don't know if I'm ready to fold to him yet on the flop. Wow, you wouldn't fold to a pot bet on the flop. Oh, he bet full pot? He, oh, I'd probably he bet 180 into 205. Oh, yeah, I'd probably fold to that. And that's why I, I think that I'm really surprised that Taylor made that call. Robbie has not been the kind of player to to bet one and then check down with any type of equity, so... Well, you're certainly right about that. Um, right, that's about 75% of the pot here. Yeah. And now I can't imagine that Taylor is going to be able to continue on the turn. It looks like he's reaching for chips, and he does make the call. Tony, I don't know what's going Whoa. on here. <laughs> Whoa, he really doesn't believe him. 
Mm, that's a pretty sweet card for your ace deuce. Are we going again, Ravi? This is not a good river for Robbie to bluff. However, no, if however if he does, Taylor is really has to believe he's at the bottom of his check call check calling range. Yes, he absolutely is. But does Robbie care about that? Yeah, I mean, you might just be like, you know what? You could have eight nine, jack nine, right. jack eight. Right. If he thinks he he eight, follows six. through with all of those hands. Yeah. That's half of Taylor's remaining stack. Wow. 815, which is about 60% the size of the pot. It certainly looks like a value bet. Oh, man. I mean, but it's 10 or nothing, right? I mean, technically, you can flat call like jacks or something pre, but you're not that worried about those type of things. Oh, Taylor got him! Wow. 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 And what a huge momentum shift there. Now, now Ravi is a short stack at the table, and Taylor has just shy of 4 million chips. That's how you win two WPGTs in a row, Kane. What a hand. What I mean, what... What made him want to check call the turn there, Tony? What what can we learn from Taylor's play on this hand? <laughs> I mean, he's just at this point he thinks that Ravi is firing way too frequently. So okay, you know, seven seven ten. I'm gonna check call. I don't think you have something better than me. The turn is essentially a brick. All right, I don't think that changed anything. I'm gonna check call again. All right, River's a sweet card for my hand. I'm not gonna fold to you. Um, See, to me, what would make me want to take that line is if I thought my opponent was not going to A, barrel with, with higher aces, and B, not bet hands like 3x on the turn, pocket fives, pocket fours, pocket sixes. I'm not sure if we have enough information on Ravi to, to disqualify those hands. I, you know, I, I mean, even, even... I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough one. Even man. if Ravi has 8-9, you, you don't have great equity in the hand or anything. I mean, he can hit any 8, any 9, any 6, or any jack to win the pot. Um, Maybe you just decide that those are the cards you're folding to on the run out, and the right. rest you're calling. Well, nonetheless, a fantastic hand by, by Taylor Parr, and he's showing us why it is he's made back-to-back -back WPT final tables, and it probably does help him that he has made back-to-back -back WPT final tables with, with Robbie, and therefore he has some reads that, that we don't, but what an amazing well, call. Yeah, we'll talk about it a little more when we get back, but for now, these guys are on break, and uh, so are we.